Hey everybody, this is Guru Francis from Filipino Martial Arts School, Big Boy Screamador, and today's another FMA tutorial, and today we're going to be talking about uh, the effectiveness of defense, okay, how to make sure that your defense is effective. But before we do that, please don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget that notification button so that you're alerted to the latest videos or tutorials that comes out of uh, Filipino Martial Arts School. So let's do this. So I was talking to a friend of mine the other day about effectiveness of the, uh, the effective defense. Basically, what we, what we were debating about was that if somebody was to block or do some sort of defensive move and against, and then your opponent still was able to connect with you, like touch you or, or, or you know, do some, you know, do some, um, uh, you know, some sort of damage on you, right, that that shouldn't count because that was an unintentional strike. Now, he believes that that, that shouldn't count, but I believe it does, okay? Because we have to put some realism into into our into the into the matches, okay, into the tournaments. Because in a real match, if I was to accident, if even if you move my hand out of the way or my stick hand out of the way, but then you move it to the to a spot where I can still hit you, well, that really would count in the real world scenario as well, right? So what I'm just trying to say is that that when you're doing the defense. It has, you have to make sure that you do the, the you, you execute the technique that does the minimal amount of damage to you, to yourself, okay? Now, why do I say that? Well, because some, some sort of damage is inevitable. For example, if we were to do knife fighting, one of the first things that I tell my students when it comes to knife fighting is that you have to accept that you're going to get cut. That's just a given, okay? Now, if you don't get cut, great, but you have to accept that you're going to get cut. Now... It, now, it really depends on where you're going to get cut. If I get cut across the neck or across my stomach or, you know, across my face, right, then that's more of a death blow, okay? But if I get cut in the forearm, especially the outside of my forearm, then, yeah, it's going to hurt and, I'm, you know, I'm going to bleed, but I'm not most necessarily going to die from it, okay? So the best defense, of course, is to make sure that there's minimal amount of damage and, of course, the best case scenario is that there's no damage done to you. So... I say that because your defense has to be effective to the point where you have to be aware that there's still possible ways of attacking. Now, I've been getting a lot of comments about when I'm doing these tutorials saying that you realize that the person in a real fight will not just stand there. Yes, I do. Okay, this is, this is called an FMA tutorial, meaning that we're, we're breaking down the technique so that people can try this at home or try this in, in, in whatever fashion or capacity. That you're learning how to do this on a step-by-step -step basis, but then apply it to more of a real-life scenario, okay? Now, another thing that I want to point out, that there's, no thing, there's nothing I can do in a classroom to duplicate a life-and-death situation. So it's kind of pointless for you to tell me that won't work in a real-life-and-death situation because, well, I'm, you know, I can't duplicate that in the classroom. I'm just doing wh what's, what I think is best, okay? So... But right now, again, these are tutorials and it needs the system, the technique needs to be broken down so that people can learn it. Okay, so now we're going to talk about defense and I have my student Raymond. Okay, he's going to be helping me put this technique together. Now, when we're doing the strikes, this is about the standard strike for most Filipino martial arts system. The, the, the first strike is always coming from his shoulder, right shoulder into my left temple, the left part of my head. That's usually the standard uh, strike in with an FMA. Now there's some FMA system that might differ, but that, I'm just saying that's the most standard in the FMA lexicon of things. Okay, so when he strikes here, that's the most common strike. Okay, so we're just gonna base it on that first strike. So then when he strikes and I block, just like this, right? Then I come in here, here, here. That would be an ineffective teaching technique. Why? Because this is creating bad habits. When he strikes here, boom, and I'm here, I'm assuming that this hand or this stick is not going to hit me anymore. You can't assume that. You have to assume that they can still hit you. Because if I do this and then all of a sudden he's striking me, oh, well, that's a lot of damage on me. Again, the, most, the, the, the goal of the defense is to do the minimum amount of damage to yourself. So then if I, he strikes here and I check the forearm here, right, and I'm coming in this way, I'm coming in this way. Oh, so that looks a lot better. No, it's still not looking better because he can still strike me to the top of the head, strike me to the body, strike me across the abdomen. Boom. Still not an effective defense, okay? Because, because there's still, it doesn't achieve the goal 
or doing the minimal amount of damage to myself. So come back here, Raymond. So now when he strikes me here, boom, I'm making sure that the first contact that he's gonna make, I'm gonna make with his stick is with my stick as well. So he strikes again, boom, right? And I'm not gonna keep my hand up here in the forearm because he can strike me here, correct? Okay, I'm gonna slide it down to his thumb so that when he tries to strike me above, he can't. Try, even if he tries to twist it, twist it forward, twist it, he still can't. I'm more of a, I'm, I have a better control. He tries to uh, strike me at the, uh, my ribs, he still can't because I've got better control. Okay, so he does that, boom, and I'm doing my technique. Great, and I'm still defended this way. It's, now, that's a, that's a better technique than the first two that I was showing, but it's still not good enough because when he strikes me here, just like you guys were saying, he's not gonna stand still. He's probably gonna punch me with the other hand, right? Oh, so we gotta make sure that I'm aware of that as well. So when he strikes me here, boom, boom, boom. Oh, he's gonna punch me. Oh, dude, I'm in trouble. We need to, the, the technique needs to, has to put that into account. So if he strikes me here, boom, boom, he punches here. I twist it this way, boom. I strike him here to the ribs. Pop it up this way, and then lock him in. Okay. Those are the things you have to be aware of. So again, let's break down that technique. Boom, punch, boom, boom, and all the way through. Let's, let's, speed, let's, let's speed it up a tiny bit. Sure. So he strikes, boom, boom, boom. There you go. So when you're doing these techniques, and you're doing defense, you have to be aware of all the tools that can be used against you. My name is Guru Francis from Filipino Martial Arts School. Peace out, God bless, and keep swinging them sticks.